Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Father, I demand right now from you my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, realizing see when you when you study the scriptures thank god for the bible truly thank god for the bible see in god's wisdom now there is the wisdom of god in other words there is uh and i'll share something with you yesterday there are the way God have created things. He's created them with his word. See, God has created, there is nothing. See, now, let me, let me, let me put, tell you this. There is nothing that will come out in this world that will be a big surprise to God and he cannot handle. No. See, that's why we should be careful how we fight things. Because sometimes we just fight things because we feel it's new. So we feel uh, it's a strange thing. We're not used to it. So definitely it is not right or it is not good. No. But you don't know what the Father have created. You don't know. You don't know. What the Father created in six days, the Holy Ghost is still forming them, even till this day. See? There are things, there are two things, there are things that have been formed that we don't even understand yet. And there are things that are yet to be formed. See, and the Holy Ghost is just doing his job beautifully. And like I told you, it's going by cause and effect. So there are things we did not need 3,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago. We didn't need them. So he wasn't just creating things and you know, forming things and throwing into the world. No! I just showed you yesterday how he created all the animals. God created them first. But in the formation of things, man came first. And because of man, all the animals were created. See, that's how truly, because if in, I come in, there. in Genesis 1, God put all those things under man's authority. If God is putting them under man's authority, I want you to think in reality now. How do you put under authority something you created before the other? You see? So in the formation of things, we see the wisdom of God displayed. We see the wisdom of God displayed. I'm sharing this with you to let you know that there are a lot of things you may not understand. Even though you see them, you may not understand the reason for those things. The only person that can reveal the reason for those things is the Holy Spirit. And that's why sometimes all these funny arguments, they are so useless. Because those that are arguing against or arguing for they all might just be wrong. <laughs> God. You remember the, the, the woman Jesus met at the well. She said, hey, I perceive you're a prophet. Look, let me ask you one question I've been always um, carrying in my heart. I'll ask a, a, a real prophet when I meet one. Okay, so now, our fathers worship on this mountain. But you Jews, you say it's only in Jerusalem that we can worship. So who's right and who's wrong? I mean, she asked the best person. <laughs> I don't think any other person would have answered that question better than Jesus. And Jesus responded to her and said, what you worship, you don't even know. 
And then he now actually says salvation is of the Jews. Meaning, the pattern of salvation is seen with the Jews. But he didn't stop there. He says, hey woman, listen. The hour is coming and now is when you shall neither worship in this your mountain or in Jerusalem. What are you saying? What he was saying is neither your own argument, the Samaritan argument, or the Jewish argument was right. They were all wrong. All those worship places were just makeshifts. Now, how did they come about worshiping there? Because Jacob dug a well there. So they said, then we must, because he built an altar. So we must, and then, oh, they lived in Jerusalem. So this must be the real altar. Uh -uh. God is not limited by a physical place. So Jesus brought the truth to her and said, neither of you, all right? God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Those are the ones the father is looking for to worship him. If the father is looking for people to worship him, then you now know that you've got to put yourself in position to give him the worship that he accepts. So it's not every worship you give to him that he is forced to accept. You can't force him to accept. No matter how you sing, accept our worship. <laughs> you must find out what he wants and give it to him. And what he desires has been expressed with his relationship with man over the years. And that's why we have documentaries like this Bible. And you see, it's important I, I tell you here that every writing you can find about God, don't neglect it. Every writing that you find about God, beyond even the Bible, some people find it difficult to accept that in the natural, this Bible, this, this Bible we have, that especially the the King James Bible. Now, today, the most popular Bible is the King James Bible. Okay. And it's popular because, um, a king. Now, not because King James actually wrote the Bible. He didn't write the Bible. He authorized that he got some theologians together. And when you study history, you'll find that it was even for political reasons. It wasn't necessary for spiritual reasons. Go find out. That's why when people argue over canonization of the scriptures, it's funny. It's funny because the people who did this job, you don't even know if they have the Holy Ghost or not. Were they used by God? Of course they were used. Because listen, everything, everything was made for him and without him was not anything made that was made. You understand what I'm saying? Now, God wanted us to have... Now, there were Bibles before this one. There were. And it doesn't mean those ones were wrong. There were people who read... The, there were there, there, are, there are fathers of old who didn't use this Bible. When we talk about John Knox, and they, they didn't have the King James Bible. They lived before King James. Yet they preached the word of God with boldness. And men feared them. They walked in the anointing. They didn't have the King James Bible, but they had a Bible that they read from. They had Bibles. They had a Geneva Bible that's bigger. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? But then King James Bible became popular because the moment they came up with these 66 books, it, King James ordered because that was when the printing press had been invented. So King James ordered because he wanted to use this, his um, writings, this, his selected book. Now, go, go read history. Just Google is your friend. Go, go, just type the origin of the King James Bible. You will read some information there. So, because one wanted to control 
Because you see, naturally, if you want to control people, try to control the way they think. And you will get them under your control. So the moment they were done with this 66, King James ordered for it to be printed, mass produced. The Bible they had then was not for everybody. You've got to be somebody to be able to afford it. Because then they, 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 they manually write each one of them. See? So then I think it was, you, if you want one, you have to order for it. And they will have to work on it and give it to you. But then King James ordered that they should mass produce this, his Bible. That's why I said the King James Bible. You know, not because he wrote it. He didn't write it. He authorized the, um, the compilation of these 66 books. Wonderful material. Like I say, everything here is true. Everything written here is true. But the mistake we make is to think that this is the only place we can find truth. The moment your mind is that way, you begin to delve into error because you will become limited. And when you get to the junction that you don't see any continuation, you begin to add things. That's where error comes from. You begin to add things by yourself, I mean. Meanwhile, the intention of God was not to lock us up to a physical book. The intention of God, Jesus himself said it, that he is going away so that the Holy Spirit will come. And when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit's job is to teach us all things. Are you following what I'm saying? The work of the Holy Spirit is to teach us all things. In the days of Jesus, they had Bibles. Oh, they did have Bibles. Jesus spoke to the Jews. He said, you search the scriptures. What do you think they were searching? He told them, he said, you guys, you search the scriptures. And these scriptures testify of me and I'm here. Hey, I'm here. And guess what they were still doing? They will look at him. Go away. Let us search the scriptures for the real Christ. Christ is here. Praise God. Oh, Branika Sabaraganda Fire. It's the same way people behave today. Jesus is alive. He is here. But guess what? They are still arguing with him with the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is the best friend you can ever have. If you don't know how to relate with him, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. Because you see, Jesus left us in his hands. Jesus did not leave us with a Bible. I will say this and say it until it enters into you. If your thoughts on God have become limited by the scriptures, then I'm sorry. You are just about to go into error. Because that's not a limitation for God. It becomes your limitation. And because it has become your limitation, you are not open for the Holy Spirit to teach you. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit will not teach you anything outside what is written. Yes. But here is the problem, and I need you to understand this. Here is the problem. Many of us don't even understand what is written. So we judge the Holy Spirit by our little understanding of what is written. But here is the problem. In living the life, you encounter challenges that you now wonder. So, so how do I handle this one when there is no specific written word consigning it? Then you go as far as thinking that if there is no, there is no scripture written consigning it, then maybe God left it for our own. No, sir. He didn't leave it for our own reasoning. 
we have been given the Holy Spirit to guide us. When we get to that junction, it's for us to say, yes, Lord, what, what's this now? How do we navigate this? And he is the one. And let me tell you, this is as a warning. When he steps into the matter, he will mess up your understanding of even the scriptures. Everyone who's worked with the Holy Ghost will bear this testimony. He knows how to mess up your understanding. Now, when I mean mess up your understanding, rearrange it. But that's the process that many fear. That process is a process that many fear. But that's what it takes to follow. That's what it takes to walk with him. The more you walk with him, the more you understand. The more you walk with him, the more you understand. But hey, if you take him out of the equation and walk with the Bible, you will end up with arguments. Yeah, you will end up with arguments. The Bible is not written for us to argue. It's written for us to believe. John said it. He said, these things are written. When I mean the Bible, I'm not just talking about the 60s. I'm talking about every writing. Every writing of the scriptures, from the prophets, the Psalms, the historical books, every one of them, they were written that we will believe. So he tells us the good, the bad, and the ugly. He tells us as it is. He tells us exactly what happened. That's why it is called the book of truth. Yeah. And so you find, you find believers who say, please, anything that is not written in this Bible, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to, I don't want to dabble into anything that will confuse my mind. It's, it's so amazing that people think that way. Meanwhile, they still read every other material. Why is it the spiritual one? Why is it the, the one that is connected to your, to your life that you now term as one that can confuse you? You read newspapers. Okay, <laughs> you read novels, you read novels growing up, you read textbooks. Even today, you're reading, reading books written by men. It did not confuse you. It's fine. It's okay. There is my library. I read books. I'm a voracious reader. Okay. So there is this book. Ah, no, 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 no. When it comes to this, the Bible is enough for me. <laughs> Amazing thinking. But your thoughts are wrong. Hey, I, you know, I've heard people who read this thing and they became mad. How do you believe those kind of things? Now, why am I sharing these things with you? Open your heart to the Holy Spirit. Don't limit yourself. You see, I've picked materials that are not um, um, scriptures that are not spiritually, um, the connotation are not spiritual. You understand what I'm saying? Since I have picked and I'm reading. And while I'm reading, the Holy Ghost begin to speak to me and bring knowledge to me. Why should I be afraid of a writing? No, sincerely. Why should I be afraid of a writing? When the judge, you see, now, oh, don't say these things because younger folks will get confused. And hey, how long will they remain babes? How long will they remain younger folks? The Holy Spirit have been given to us. And listen, from day one. Listen, if you are a child of God, even if you think you're getting confused, the Holy Ghost is there to bring you to truth. Why are you afraid to grow? Why can't you trust the Spirit of God? Why must you limit yourself to the thinking of men? The Holy Ghost is there for you. And the Bible clearly stated, the just shall live by his faith. What does it mean? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the voice of God. So you, the just man, it was planned, structured, that you will live by what you hear. 
If you are not hearing, then you are not living by faith. If you are not living by faith, you are not pleasing God. And if you are not pleasing God, you're dead. Our time is up. Praise God. In this season, your mind will change about a lot of things. And you'll be stirred up to believe God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.